What up guys, today uh, we're in the middle of nowhere, California, and we're out here to take a carbine shooting tactical course. And then tomorrow it's gonna be a pistol course. So I'm taking the courses of action, and this course was recommended to me by my buddy Nick, who is a former Marine Raider. And I was like, what can I do to be like you? Because uh, I've been itching to get back into shooting and doing military type stuff. And I know it's random. Um, I got out of the Marines in 2009, and it's 2017. So eight years later, randomly I get this itch. And the itch was so strong that I was even talking to Gio about re-enlisting. And then she was like, are you fucking crazy? You run all these businesses and you have a newborn who's going to bounce on us and go back into the core. And I was like, then what should I do? And then so I talked to my buddy Nick and he's like, well, you could take a bunch of classes in the civilian sector. And that's what I'm doing. So today I'm doing the carbine course as well as the pistol course. So while if Bart and I are behind that truck that I rented and we're interdicting targets and threats, I may do a tactical reload being... I don't know how many rounds I fired. People will tell you, oh, keep track of how many rounds you fired. I promise you when you're shooting at somebody and somebody's shooting back at you, you're not gonna keep track of that shit. That's the last thing on your mind, okay? But what we can do is understand that I fired rounds from this magazine and I'm going from point A to point B. So I may wanna do a tactical reload, meaning take that magazine that has rounds in it already, take that magazine that has rounds in it already, take it out, Put it a little further back or in a dump pouch, take a fresh mag out and insert that mag. So now I'm going to the next point with as much gas as I can, the unknown. I'm going to have as many bullets as I can whenever I'm going from point A to point B there. All right. And then I know that if all these mags go dry and I may have this mag and it may have six rounds or 15, but six or 15 rounds whenever you need them means a lot. All right. Pull the trigger. Follow it the whole time. And we're not stopping. Constant motion. All right, now I want you to keep your eyes on me and move your finger back and forth. And whenever your finger crosses me, press the trigger. So that was the first time I ever did that drill. I think most of my rounds are in the dirt on the sides because uh, you, you actually never like practice reset and pulling the trigger when you're on target. So all right, you guys. New. So uh, <laughs> that's good. All right, now faster. Maybe felt slightly awkward. We're not used to shooting that fast, but now this is combat marksmanship. All right? If we take all those shots we threw, three rounds out of all those. The rest of them are I'd say those are effective hits. Right? Cool. Go jam axe. That shit was crazy hard. I never did anything like that before. You know, usually when you go to a range, you're just shooting in a straight line. And sometimes you'll go with like a law enforcement friend or military friend or a competitive friend. A little, but it was really cool to run this exercise. Not only just walk through like the mechanics behind it, but also a real life scenario. Whereas like usually when you think about home defense, you think about someone, like one person coming into your house, right? You're like, oh cool, I can disable that person. But then now when he was talking about what if three people come in? Do you just focus on the one person? No. You want to get into people's heads. You want to show how aggressive and how quickly you can move and you want to disable all three people. And that's what that drill's for. And it was really cool to kind of practice that. I liked it a lot. Two, head, head, head. Oh, 
So that's another drill I did for the first time. And it's amazing how the second time you do it, you're already that much more comfortable. So it's cool to like go to these classes so that I can learn drills to hopefully practice at ranges at home. I'll do it slow at first so you guys can see what it looks like slower. Then I'll run it at about 60% so you guys don't try to mimic what I do and just shock and blast everything. Right? Cool. It seems like if you're white, you have no rhythm, you can't do this. If you're white, you have no rhythm? Aha, but I'm Italian. <laughs> Boom. So, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So, first time through. And you guys, if you see what I'm doing when I use my forward assist, okay, that's not guaranteed to get it forward all the time when I do a press track or something like that. I also like to put my thumb on that little indentation on the bolt, okay, and press forward on that. And if your gun doesn't have a forward assist, which some don't nowadays, you can just do that. Like the old grease guns, they used to load them by putting their finger in that little hole in the bolt, pulling it to the back, and then pushing it forward. All right? Everyone have ears? Sweet. So, going slow, so you guys can get the idea of how the drill runs, all right, is this. All right, now what happened? I kind of messed around with my trigger finger in there so you guys could hear how my cadence changed, right? It went one, one, two, one, two, three, and then it was like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, right? You want to have a steady cadence going the whole way through, okay? So the same way that we're leading with our eyes on the 322 drill and on all that shit. I'm a loser today. The same way that we're leading with our eyes, not our gun, everything like that. We point our dicks at what we want to shoot. Same thing. We just have to keep our cadence. Do 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 Okay? Yep. Better, it's just getting that cadence down, right? Yeah. Good smooth run, dude. That was good. That was super smooth. One of the drills I did the most horribly on was the one to five drill. So you go one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. It's in your head, Bart. And no matter what, I ran it like a couple times. Every time I go to five, it's always very sporadic and have very bad cadence. And I kept assuming when I was talking to Johnny, I was like, is it my trigger? Am I pulling it the wrong way? Like, and I was getting very, very technical, like figuring out where the relief was, where the click was, where the wall of the trigger was. And he goes, honestly, you're just not counting. And it's just straight up basics going one, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then so he was like, look, take out the moving focus on just the target in the center and count to 10 as fast as you can and pull the trigger with it. And then I went, what did you do for five, six, seven, nine, ten? 10? It was smooth all the way through and I'm like, oh shit. So that was fine. Yeah. You count, right? Count, 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 count. Okay. Well, thank you. No worries. So it wasn't as technical as I thought it was. It was just kind of, I guess, slowing things down and just being very intentional with what I was doing, and all of a sudden, one of the hardest drills turned into something that was very easy. And so that's like one huge improvement that I made that I could definitely go home with now. Oh, hell no. Your cardio is really good, right? My cardio sucks. No, like, I, I see, you own a gym, right? Your cardio, yeah, your cardio, I don't work on cardio, cardio I work on strength. I'm fast, I could be explosive, but I cannot, if, I, if it was like two steps up the hill, I got this. Like right where he's about to be, like right there. I'd be good. Let's look at the base of the hill. But you gotta go all, oh my God. Holy shit. They didn't tell me I gotta take pre-workout for this. I have a monster in my car. Dude, my shots, my group's gonna be like this. <laughs> you think you're gonna be able to carry something up that hill? We're supposed to carry something? I don't know, probably. Are you fucking kidding me? I saw a kettlebell over there somewhere. Oh god, all right. Fuck it. <laughs> nice. Can I pick it up? Yeah. Oh, five.
five. Five overhead. <coughs> five. Two, two, two in the head from the cone. Yeah. Back here, five overhead. Shoot the steel. Coming down the side of the hill, the plant is easier. Oh, okay. sucks about red dots is you can see all the movement. So whenever I'm pushing up with the iron sights. In terms of a short distance type of thing, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Cause uh, man, you know, like you practice all the shooting, but you're never put in a stressful situation, you're always calm. And you don't realize how a stressful situation can really throw off your shooting. And that shit was fucking hard. So that little bag, it's actually 75 pounds. So when you look at it, it doesn't look that heavy. And then you start throwing it overhead. That's pretty much half like a normal guy's body weight, you know? Like if someone's 150, you're throwing half an adult male over you. Do a couple times, and you go up the hill, and now I know why all those instructors are wearing those funky shoes, like the Solomon Speed Crosses and stuff. Because normal running, well these are trail shoes too, but normal running shoes just aren't gonna cut, I don't have enough grip. I was surfing, sand surfing on the way down. Came down, had to do another five of those overhead things. Ran up to the targets, and then the first thing you have to do is three uh, headshots with two each, and that's hard because headshots are precise shots. So now it's almost like if you play basketball, imagine um, you do all these crazy sprints, and now you have to do a three-point shot or a half-court shot, something that's very difficult in the head, and you want to land two shots per. And then you gotta run back, spike your heart rate one more time with five more throws, and then hit steel from way far back. So maybe that one, yeah, maybe the headshots are three, three point, uh, three, three point shots, and then at the end, half court shot with a pistol. And that shit was difficult, and I'm so glad that it's over, because uh, when I was watching the first guy do it, the minute he was doing it, my heart started beating fast already, because I was like, fuck, this shit looks hard. So I was like, I gotta volunteer next, get it over with, because the more I watch people do it, the more anxiety I'm gonna get, and fuck that. This was even hard for Johnny, and he's a fucking Special Forces Green Beret, so I'm fucking a YouTube comedian, you know? <laughs> so it's really fucking hard, but it was awesome. So glad that I did it, because every time you push your body and you reach a new threshold or a limit, you know, hey, you know what? 
you look back in retrospect, retrospect and it's not that bad, and now you can push yourself even more and make what was uncomfortable a now comfortable situation. And that's what training is all about, regardless if it's skiing, shooting, lifting weights, running, whatever. The class is going awesome. I'm learning so much, and it's really cool to learn from an instructor that has a ton of experience. He's a former Green Berets, jumped out of planes, done a, done a ton of shooting, been to a million gunfights, and it's cool to constantly learn theory, but also understand the application and scenario he's talking about. And, um, you know, like for me, I love buying weapons, and I always try to buy like really good stuff. But I also feel like I'm that guy that has like the Ferrari in the garage that doesn't really get to you know, take it on the track. So this is me bringing all that stuff on the track. Like half the times I'm just like fidgeting because I don't even know how to use, <laughs> use half the stuff. But it was really cool to kind of get in there and shoot and have someone uh, coach you and get better and, and kind of like slow things down as he was putting it. Because one, uh, one of the best lectures he was giving was talking about how um, when we drive 80 miles an hour and texting, it's, we can do things simultaneously and FaceTime and do all these things. And that's because we have through so much repetition we get so good that things can slow down and it's actually multitasking versus a gun. A lot, a lot of times you put a gun in someone's hand and they just freak out, but it's like, that's actually way easier. Shooting, putting, pulling the trigger is actually way easier than texting and driving 80 miles an hour, but because you don't have that much repetition, you freak out. So um, it was cool to hear that and kind of get things put in perspective so that now I know like the speed that I see him move at, I can get there too if I just practice, 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 practice.